On to our biggest story from India today, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman has unveiled the country's budget for the next financial year, being dubbed the blueprint of India at 100. It includes the highest ever capital expenditure outlay in infrastructure and agricultural sector. New Delhi has also reworked its personal income tax labs under the new regime, bringing huge relief to the country's middle class. Those with income up to 5 lakh do not pay any tax do not pay any income tax in both old and new regimes. I propose to increase the rebate limit to 7 lakhs in the... I propose to... I propose to increase the rebate limit to 7 lakh in the new tax regime. While the new scheme has become the default one, the government has said that the old personal tax scheme still remains valid. But there will be no change to the structure. The new tax rates are 0 to 3 lakh, nil. 3 to 6 lakhs, 5%. 6 to 9 lakhs, 10%. 9 to 12 lakh, 15%. 12 to 15 lakhs, 20% and above 15 lakhs, 30 percent. This will provide major relief to all taxpayers in the new regime. Now, Sitharaman called it the first budget of Amrit Kal, which is the 25-year period culminating to India's 100 years of independence. The finance minister said that India's economy has grown to the fifth largest in the world from the 10th in just nine years. The world has recognized the Indian economy as a bright star. Our current year's economic growth is estimated to be at 7%. It is notable that this is the highest among all the major economies. This is in spite of the massive slowdown globally caused by COVID-19 and the war. The Indian economy is therefore on the right track and despite a time of challenges, heading towards a bright future. Speaking on fiscal deficits, Sidharaman said that the target of 6.4% will be retained for the current fiscal year, but will be lowered to 5.9% for next year. The finance minister also said that India's capital investment will be increased by 33% to 10 trillion rupees or 3.3% of the total GDP next year. Sitharaman listed seven priorities of her government. Listen in. The budget adopts the following seven priorities. They, com they complement each other and act as the Saptarishi guiding us through the Amritkal. Inclusive development, reaching the last mile, infrastructure and investment, unleashing the potential, green growth, youth power, and financial sector. To get us more insight on India's 2023 union budget, Arvind Dharmani is joining us live from the headquarters of Niti Aayog. Welcome to the broadcast. Let's start with the agriculture sector. Many subsidies have been slashed in the latest budget, including fertilizers. How do you think the farmers are going to react to that? So, <clears throat> as uh, you know, uh, the fertilizer price or the fertilizer cost depends on the price of oil. So uh, everybody is aware that in 2023, oil prices uh, in US, in Europe, internationally jumped by a huge amount. That had a, a cost push effect on fertilizers and all other products using gas and oil. In fact, uh, you may have uh, heard that gas prices in Europe doubled and and in a couple of days even went to 10 times. So basically, uh, automatically, given that the fertilizer price is controlled in India uh, and everything is absorbed into subsidies, that was just the outcome of the increase in oil and gas prices and it affects its effects on fertilizer. Uh, with oil prices already, uh, if you recall, they, they touched $110 per barrel at one point and then they have gone down 
uh, below uh, 80 uh, dollars a barrel but they are currently between 80 and 90 so so the subsidy on fertilizer is actually uh, does not have any direct effect on uh, the farmer their price is controlled it is just an internal uh, effect on the fisc and the fiscal deficit so that will have no effect on the farmer all right, Mr. Varmani. Now, the pandemic unmasked a need for a collaborative public health management, right? And not just in India, but also worldwide. The new budget has proposed to build hospitals and investments in medical research. But do you think there was room to do better for the healthcare system in India? Uh, so, this is a continuing process. If you recall, uh, the last budget, there were several measures directly connected with the pandemic. If I recall, my, your memory is probably better than mine, but there were a whole number of district hospitals, uh, etc., which were funded in the last budget. I think in the current budget, the most noticeable one for me, uh, just listening to the budget, was uh, the announcement of, I think, 75 nursing colleges, really. Uh, it's often been felt that uh, there is a lack of uh, trained nurses in India and there is a huge market for nurses abroad. So I think that single measure which will have a big effect uh, uh, on, on the provision of health both in India and in, in terms of jobs uh, and productive jobs for the population. There are a whole bunch of other smaller measures more in terms of R&D, for example, sickle cell anemia. Uh, frankly, I, I didn't know that our tribal population was uh, so heavily affected by sickle cell anemia, uh, sickle cell disease, uh, yeah. and so there are measures for that. So there are a number of measures on health, and as I said, this is not a one-time stuff. It, it, it goes on uh, through the year and through the years. Absolutely. Now, India is among the most fastest growing economies, and that, of course, is good news. But some experts say that there, you know, they have that we have been speaking to. They say that. New Delhi to take the next big leap, it needs to ride on the latest technology. And we saw some glimpses of that in today's budget, of course. There were digital infrastructure, promise for advanced technology in healthcare, as you also mentioned just now. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, so, uh, uh, we, we, you know, I'm a macro person and you haven't asked me any macro. So let me take this opportunity to give you what I a focus on All personally right. and which I think is very important. All right. uh, you know, there are three, there, there are four very important uh, medium term macro uh, growth uh, measures. One is that uh, uh, clear uh, demonstration that the, the economy will, uh, or the budget or the finance ministry will stay on the glide path. You know, uh, some of us, the general public doesn't appreciate, but, but the markets, the people who are going to supply uh, capital, those FDI which is going to come in, is all looks at this very carefully and judges the quality of governance by that measure. The second one is the uh, uh, in, in large increase in capital uh, expenditures. Uh, that is fundamentally goes into the quality of the, uh, uh, the budget, but more concretely, there's research to show that capital expenditures by the government have a multiplier of 2.5 this compares with a z less than 1% for revenue expenditures. Again, this is something the general public does not appreciate, but uh, not only is there a huge impact on the economy, but the cumulative uh, uh, impact can be as much as uh, four times the actual expenditure. So the impact on medium-term growth and sustaining growth will be enormous, but one doesn't see it directly immediately. The third, uh, very quickly I'll go through, third mm -hmm. one on principal uh, on personal income taxes. Frankly, uh, from outside the government, uh, uh, for the last two, three years, I've been trying to uh, push simplification of personal income tax yes. uh, and, and have not seen much. So I was very surprised, frankly, I'm talking personally, I was yeah. very surprised to see it's happened and it's very good. And it affects not just salaried people, but it affects MSMEs, it affects startups, it expect, affects the returns to skilled workers, so all those uh, have the right incentives uh, uh, to uh, take risks, to try and earn money. Not all of them earn that much money, but uh, they ha have to have the expectation that they, if one in ten of them earns a lot of money, it will not all be taxed away. So it has broader implication, not just for the right. uh, salary earners. Uh, and finally, just uh, to round it, 
round it off. Uh, there are a lot of measures for inclusiveness in growth. I won't go into that. And of course, the two, uh, uh, three elements which are there before but are re-emphasized, digital India, green India, infrastructure, and EODB, which was your last question about digital. The yes. digital one is all pervasive throughout the whole thing. And I think that's a great handle uh, which the government has and Absolutely. for pushing various types of reforms. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, Arvind Armani, for all your insights.